Good morning, students, and welcome to today's class. Last class we did HCF, correct? Highest common factors. So with HCF we completed this chapter multiples and factors. So in today's class what we'll do is we'll do a quick uh, recap of what all we have learnt in multiples and factors. All right. So we started this unit by learning what are prime numbers and what are composite numbers correct so what are prime numbers numbers that have only two factors uh, one and the number itself are called as prime numbers so they'll not have any other factor other than one and the number itself so for example two one two is two and two ones as two so only one and two are the factors of two then same way if i take the number 17 there are no other factors for 17 other than one and 17 itself okay so all these numbers which have the factors as one and itself they are called as prime numbers now 2 is the only prime number which is even okay 2 is the only even prime number the rest all the even numbers are composite numbers okay and 2 is also the smallest prime number all right then we saw what are composite numbers what are composite numbers? The numbers that have more than two factors are called as composite numbers. For example, 9. 1 is in a factor for 9, 3 is in a factor for 9, and 9 is a factor for 9. So it has more than two factors, correct? So 9 is a composite number. Alright. Now coming to 1. Now 1 is neither a prime number nor a composite number number okay because it has only one factor that is itself so factor of what is one itself that's why one is called as a unique number okay one is a unique number then we studied what are multiples and factors so a multiple of a, of a given number is obtained as the product of the given number and any counting number so multiples are nothing but your multiplication table so for example if i take 6 so i have 6 12 18 24 30 36 and so on as the uh, multiples of 6 now here is, uh, how do you get these multiples so i have 6 into 1 6 6 into 2 12 6 3 is a 18 6 4 is a 24 so all 1 2 3 4 here are counting numbers and 6 is the given number so when i multiply the given number and the counting numbers you will get the multiples for that number okay then factors what are factors all numbers that can exactly divide a number without leaving a remainder are called as factors so numbers which divide a given number exactly without leaving a remainder that is the remainder if you get it as zero then the numbers are called as uh, factors all right then we saw the comparison of multiples and factors now first we'll see multiple so every number is a multiple of itself so every number will be a multiple of itself for example seven seven ones are seven so we get the first multiple of seven is 7 itself so it is a multiple of itself correct and every factor every number is a factor of itself and all its multiples okay so now uh, for example 7 only now 7 is one factor of 7 because 7 divided by 7 gives you 1 without uh, any remainder okay and 7 will also be a factor for all its multiples so what are the multiples of 7 7 14 21 uh, 28 okay 35 these are all multiples of 7 so 7 will be a factor for all these multiples so if i take 7 tables all the 7 tables what are there 7 will be a multiple for that okay then every number is a multiple of 1 okay any number you take, any big number you take, it will be a multiple of 1. Then 1 is a factor of every number. So 1 is a factor of every number. So when you start writing the list of factors for any given numbers, you can write 1 without thinking because 1 will always be a factor of that number. Okay. Then multiples are obtained by multiplication. 
you get multiples by multiplication and factors by division okay then there are countless multiples for a number okay the, there are n number of multiples for any number that number itself is the smallest multiple okay leaving zero so and it is not possible to define the highest multiple of a number so you don't know which is the highest multiple of a number because counting numbers are so many you keep multiplying so it is indefinite okay so there are infinite multiples for any number then every number has a fixed number of factors okay and it is for sure that each number will have at least two factors okay one and itself and so one is the smallest factor and the number itself is the largest factor so when you're writing the factors for any number you can write one as the smallest factor and the largest factor will be the number itself so there can't be any factor greater than the given number all right so all next point all multiples of a number are greater than or equal to the number itself so multiples are always greater than or equal to the number itself and factors are always uh, number all factors of a numbers are less than or equal to the number itself the number of uh, factors can can't be more than the oh sorry factors of a number are less than or equal to the number itself okay so this was comparison then after comparison we did a few problems on multiples and factors correct then we did the different tests of divisibility so what are the tests of divisibility first we saw divisibility rule for now divisibility rule for two is whenever a given number has even number in its ones place or zero then the number is divisible by two so if a number has in any even number that is two six eight or zero in its ones place then that number will be even and it will be divisible by two okay then divisibility test for p when a number is given to you and it ask you to test if the number is divisible by 3 then what do you do take the sum of of that number okay the number that is given you take the sum of the digits and then check if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3 if the sum of digits is divisible by 3 then the number will be divisible by 3 okay now so now to check if the number is divisible by 4 you have to check if the tens and ones place together Okay, the digits in tens and ones placed together are divisible by 4. If it is divisible by 4, then the number will be divisible by 4. Alright, then 5. So, for, for a number to be divisible by 5, the digit in the ones place should be either 5 or 0. If it is anything other than 5 or 0, then the number will not be divisible by 5. Okay. Then divisibility test for 6. Okay, for 6, if the number is divisible by 2 and 3, then that number will be divisible by 6 also. So, you have to, uh, to check if it is divisible by 6, you have to first check with divisibility rule for 2 and then check with divisibility rule for 3. If the number is divisible by both 2 and 3, then it will be divisible by 6 also. Then 8, just like 4, how you check 10s and 1s together is divisible by 4. In 8, for 8 you check if the digits in 100s, 10s and 1 together are divisible by 8. If they are divisible by 8, then that number will be divisible by 8. Okay, then 9. Uh, 9 is also similar to 3. So, if sum of all the digits is divisible by 9, then the number will be divisible by 9. Okay. And 10, if the last digit in the 0 or the digit in 1's place in the number is 0, then the number is divisible by 10. Very simple. The 1's place should be 0, then the number will be divisible by 10. Okay, for uh, 11, the difference between the sum of the digits in odd places and even places should be 0 or a multiple of 11. So, for 11, 11 what you do first you take the sum of all the 
digits in odd places and then you take the sum of digits in even places then you find the difference between those sums then if you get a difference of 0 okay or any multiple of 11 then the number will be divisible by length so we have done problems you also have seen how to do it okay so these were tests of divisibility and we did the questions on this then we learned what are prime factorization so prime factorization first let's see what is factorization okay when a, a number is written as a product of its factors okay when it is written as a product of its factors then the number is said to be factorized for example 2 3 is a 6 right or uh, 25 5 5 is a 25 36 6 6 is a 36 so these are all the factors of 36 and you have written it in the factor form it fab as a product of factors correct so this will be factorization okay, it means that the number is factorized so what is the meaning of prime factorization uh, and remember for normal factorization there can be more than one way of factorizing a number the prime factorization in prime factorization when you write the number as a product of its prime factors alone then we call it as prime factorization okay for every number there will be only one set of prime factors what are prime factors prime factors are nothing but factors which are prime numbers okay so prime factorization helps us to find hcf and lcm of a given set of numbers okay so this is prime factorization then uh, we saw different methods for prime factorization so first was factor tree method of prime factorization so they have taken uh, for 56 as an example so first what you'll do you'll write 56 here and you'll write 56 as a product of known factors so we know that 7 8 are 56 so we'll write 7 into 8 okay uh, and remember that to write the prime factors in circles or prime numbers in circles and the composite numbers in rectangles so 7 is a prime number here so we'll write it in a circle and 8 being a composite number write it in rectangle and factorize it further so we know that 2 4 are 8 so 2 again is in circle being a prime number then 4 we can further factorize 4 as 2 into 2 so the factors for prime factors for 56 will be 2 into 2 into 2 into 7 so this is how you do a factor 3 okay then we saw division method so for prime factorization by division method you start dividing the given number by small prime number divisors okay you can start dividing by small prime number divisors and you have to continue till you arrive at a prime number dividend till you get a number here at the end which is a prime number you have to continue okay and then just write it as a product of all the factors so for 48 it will be 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 okay so this is division method then we solve different problems on these methods then we saw what is lcm so what is lcm lcm of the set of numbers is the smallest number that can be exactly divided by each of the given numbers without leaving the remainder okay so we saw the different methods of determining lcm for given numbers so we saw by listing uh, the multiples then we saw by prime factorization method and we is not common division method correct so listing multiples is nothing you just have to write the multiples of the given number okay and see uh, which are the common multiples once you get the common multiples you have to see which is the smallest among that or the lowest okay so the lowest common multiple will be your lcm so for 8 and 12 lcm is 20 Okay, so this is by listing multiples method. Then we have by prime factorization method. So what you do in prime factorization method, you uh, do prime factorize by using the division method. You'll get the prime factors like this. Okay, for both the numbers, write down the prime factors. Then to write the LCM, what you do is, first you write the uh, common factors for both the numbers. So, what are the com common factors here? 3 and 5 are common factors. So, 3 into 5, 
then rest all factors which are not common you write it okay so we have 2 into 2 into this one 3 here okay so into 3 into 5 so you get 180 as a LCM for 45 and 60 okay so this is LCM for 45 and 60 by prime factorization method then common division method I mean we have seen what is division method in common division method what we do is uh, we keep dividing the number until we get 1 as the dividend here so we start from 2 so 2 12s are 24 2 15s are 30 then again we uh, divide by 2 2 6 are 12 but we cannot divide 15 by 2 so what we'll do we'll bring down 55 as it 15 as it is okay then we'll do 2 3s are 6 then again we'll bring down 15 as it is then we divide now by 3 because we cannot divide any further by 2 so 3 1s are 3 3 5s are 15 now 5 this one will bring down and this will be 5 1s are 5 so the fact lcm of 24 and 30 is 2 into 2 into 2 into 3 into 5 okay which is equal to 120 so these are the prime factors for or uh, lcm for numbers okay so this is how you do lcm by common division method then we saw different problems on all the methods for LCM. Then we did in the last class we studied what is highest common factor or HCF. Correct? So HCF or GCD of a set of numbers is the largest number that divides each of the given number exactly without leaving a remainder. Okay. So HCF can be determined by two methods. Listing the factors method and prime factorization method. So first, by listing the factors method, we uh, list the factors for the numbers given. So you already have given 36 and 45. So we write all the factors for 36 and we write the factors for 45. And then among this, we see which are the common factors. So here we have common factors as 1, 3 and 9. In this, which is the largest or the highest number, it is 9. So HCF of 36 and 45 is 9. Okay. Then by prime factorization method, you write down the prime factors uh, by common division method for both the numbers. Then you write here only the common prime factors. Okay, you write the common prime factors and multiply it. But in LCM, you write common prime factors also and prime factors which are not common also. So here in HCF, we write only the common prime factors. So we have 2 and 1 more 2 and 2. So we have three twos as common and one three as a common prime factor. So when you multiply all that, you get the HCF as 24. So HCF of 72 and 96 is 24. So this is the common division, uh, sorry, this is by prime factorization method. Then we saw comparison of LCM and HCF. LCM is the smallest number that can be divided by each of the given numbers without leaving a remainder. HCF is the largest number that can divide each of the given numbers without leaving a remainder. Okay, then what is uh, LCM is equal to or larger than the largest among the given numbers and HCF is equal to or smaller than the smallest among the given numbers. Okay, and LCM can be determined by listing multiple prime factorization or common division method. HCF can be determined by listing the factors or by prime factorization method. Then we saw what is the relation between HCF and LCM. So the simple relationship between HCF and LCM of two numbers is HCF into LCM is equal to product of the two numbers. So if you want to check if your HCF and LCM is correct, then what you can do, you can just multiply the HCF and LCM and multiply the given numbers. If both the answers are equal, then your HCF and LCM is correct and you have verified it. Okay, so this was relation between HCF and LCM. Then we saw various problems on this. So this completes the chapter multiples and factors, right? Now, for your uh, homework, I want you to do the integrate and try to do the higher order thinking skills questions for your homework today.
page number 123 in your textbooks. Okay. Integrate and higher order thing itself. Try and do that. Okay. And we'll continue in the next class. Thank you.